Hello, pilots. Thought we might do a, something a little different today. Uh, this is the launch day for a game called Warno, uh, which I have queued up in the screen in front of me here. I don't know how many of you play uh, real-time strategy games or enjoy those, but uh, Eugen, the makers of Warno, have a long history of producing really good games, including Steel Division, which for a time was available through the War Games launcher, uh, War Gaming's launcher. They sold it uh, for Eugen. And that's how I discovered the game and, and got into the company and uh, their stuff. It's a little different than other RTSs. Uh, if you're a Speed Demon RTS pro player, you know, Command and Conquer, stuff flying over the battlefield, 20 moves per minute kind of guy, uh, then cool, this can do that for you. But one of the unique things about Eugen's games is you can also slow them down and make them smaller. And that's what I've done for you today, just to illustrate a little of the game. In case it was something you were interested in picking up on launch day here, um, I've been a backer of this since early access, and uh, I do enjoy it. I don't think it's quite as good as Steel Division 2. If you aren't a Eugen fan and haven't picked this one up and are curious, I would say Steel Division 2 is still the crowning achievement, but uh, this one's fun. So this is Cold War Gone Hot, uh, 1984, 85, and um, I've got it set to where I have um, a cap on the units and a time limit on the game. So it's just going to be small. I'm going to have 10 or 12 units. And the goal is to capture zones. You have a starting area, your recon, and uh, airborne units can push up higher than that to begin with. They have a starting area back here. And then uh, we have uh, neutral zones in here, which are worth a certain number of points. This is a very small beginner map called Death Row uh, for the simple fact that you know it's easier to kind of keep track of everything in a line here. And basically, whoever's controlling the center zone wins. And so it becomes kind of a big fur ball in the middle here. So uh, I've just got the AI medium, not super challenging. Normally I play on hard, but um, again, I wanted to slow the game down and show you guys kind of what the game is about and how it works. And that's easier if we're not going a mile a minute with, you know, a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of units on the field. So uh, I've got uh, two uh, recon units up on the board right now. Uh, so just an, a four-man Alphclar recon squad. I'm playing East Germany. Um, I love, I play Team Yankee, which is a tabletop miniatures game, sort of like Warhammer 40K or Warhammer, but again, Cold War gone hot, um, and uh, I play East Germans in that <laughs> because most of my gaming store um, likes to play the good guys, and so they need someone to play the bad guys, and so that's me. So uh, I have a couple of four-man uh, recon squads and a Jeep uh, with a KPV, KPV heavy machine gun that also doubles as a recon unit, so this will give me good eyes across the battlefield up here. And then my main force on this, I've got a pair of uh, BNP-1s that'll be coming in with the uh, and squads, which is motor, uh, motor rifle troops. And then I have a command uh, BRDM here. And command units, uh, mobile command posts are what you need to capture these zones. Uh, you have to put a command unit in the zone. It takes it a few seconds to capture it, and then the command unit can move on. It remains yours unless an enemy command unit comes and uncaps it. And command units can be um, kind of divisional in structure like this one, but they can also be local leaders as well. You could have a command unit that's an infantry squad or um, a tank, com you know, tank company command or something like that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to play it safe. My goal is to get up here, put a command unit in the zone, go ahead and get it, and then force the AI to come to me. And on medium, that's fairly easy to do. To round out my initial 500 points for this small game, I bought a uh, T55A, as you can see here. So this is going to be my main column. And uh, T-55 is not a great tank, but hopefully it'll hold off any initial advance. I do know the AI likes to bring heavy tanks and helicopters, and so I'm a little worried about that. And uh, so I'm going to invest in some AA units and aircraft of my own next. But for now, I just want to get these zones capped and get my recon set up and you know, a little bit of a defensive perimeter in the zone here. So you can see my command unit has entered this first zone, so it's starting to capture it. Uh, once this spreads out to the whole area, it is indeed capped. And now I have two points. There's five left to be captured. The other team has zero. And I start a timer here, uh, clicking up points towards victory. They will also need to click up. And uh, if it's a push, if we're both two and two, then nobody would gain any points. You have to outnumber your opponent in terms of your capture points or CP points. And so I know I've got 25 minutes left in this game. I've got a timer set for 20 minutes, so uh, the timer will run out before we win. Not that it'll matter, because our points total will be much higher anyway. So I'm going to move up the command post to the center zone and go ahead and try and capture it. I love these models, by the way. Eugen does a great job on these, um, making them look fantastic. And you'll see with some of the explosions and firepower going on uh, just how good it looks um, kind of in the, in the midst of things, uh, in the midst of the battle. So, All right. 
he's going to come in. I'm going to keep him below the lip here. You can see this is a, a, a ramp up, right? And if you ever want to check line of sight in these games, it's really easy to do. You hover over the unit or the location. For example, my recon squad here, and I hit C. And you can see what they can see. So I've got pretty good coverage over here. Um, I've moved their recon jeep over here to cover the far side. On this side, I've got these guys in corner woods so they can cover the field. And you know, I need these guys covering the woods here in case they try and sneak something up along the flank. When you're over a unit, too, you can see the ranges of their weapons. So the battle rifles, the AK-74s these guys have. Um, and then their um, you know, RPG rocket launcher, basically. Which is another thing you can do. You can always uh, click the unit, pull up information about it. You can see their MPI AKs, which is the East German form of the AK. And you can see down here, I have just purchased with my next round of points an SU-22 uh, fitted with very large anti-tank missiles. Uh, so that's to deal with anything that comes rumbling my way. And I am playing the West German, so I am looking forward to seeing some uh, Panzer II or uh, Leopard II's out there that I know my little T-55s and T-72s are going to struggle to deal with, so I need a heavy hitter in terms of anti-tank. So anyway, this is the uh, Air of Clara squad. You can see battle rifles, LMG, light anti-tank weapon basically here. Um, and uh, in a moment, I'm going to turn these off because I need these guys to be eyes, and this is not going to do a whole lot since it's only a four-man squad, not a huge volume of firepower there. But if I do want to know more information, I can hit I, and it'll pull up... Um, ranges against like they can shoot at helicopters if they're in close range obviously um, shooting attributes how long it takes them to reload and then supply cost so one of the things I'm going to do in a second here is bring in an AA unit because that's what I'm going to need to beat off helicopters and other tanks and I'm going to need to resupply that unit and some of these units on the field and so I can call in logistical units which will have a certain number of supply points in them that can be depleted to refresh infantry squads with more troops put more gas in the tanks of these uh, you know, armored units or uh, carry more ammunition onto the field. Each unit also has a number of kind of um, traits up here. Uh, for example, the Ralph Clare are resolute, so they take less suppression in combat. As combat goes on, you see a white bar, which is kind of the overall health of the unit if it's in full health or damaged or dead. But above that, when combat starts, you'll see a green, yellow, red bar that's their suppression. You know, how much they're, how close they are to panicking, that sort of thing. And of course, as a recon unit, they can see further ahead and deploy further ahead. And of course, this little eyeglasses thing is an easy way to keep track of that as well. Then you hit I and just goes away again. You can see I've already called in Estrella anti-aircraft unit. So he's trucking up the main road here. And uh, any aircraft units are great. One of the issues though is getting visibility. You need them in a place where they can see the aircraft, have a clear line of sight of the aircraft, like an open field or something. Because if I set him in the trees here, zoom in close, you know, he's not going to be able to see the horizon. So although these missiles have a pretty good range on him, he's not out in the open, he can't use it very well. So i got to find a place to put him that'll be helpful. And then I'm also called in this uh, truck as well for munitions. And you can see he has 500 supply units, and I've got him set to supply whoever he comes in contact with. So. All right, in the meantime, the first enemy unit has appeared, a little recon jeep. And it uh, looks like he's probably going to drop a recon, recon squad up here as well. I've turned off the weapons on my off clear squad so they don't shoot. Just said, hey, hold your fire for now. And I think, well, if it's a little four-man squad in that jeep, the jeep is probably going to leave. So um, I might want to move in my motor rifles to kind of deal with that. By the way, you can see a link here. These are dismounted infantry. If they're close to their transport, they fight better, right? They take less suppression. But I'm going to let go of that for now and uh, move up here. And right as I do that, uh, you see, boom, the first enemy command unit has appeared challenging the center zone. And it is a Leopard 1A5, which looks gorgeous. Again, Eugen does a great job with these units, making them look fantastic. And I've spotted him because of my Alf Clarers over here. But now he's out of range again. So I'm going to wait for him to pop out with my T-55 there and hopefully get a side shot. And I'm going to go ahead and move these guys up to challenge the Alf Clarer. Unfortunately, when I do that, um, the tank can see them, and he's just out of range of my T-55's guns, old 100-millimeter uh, guns. So I put myself in a little bit of a pickle here and realize, okay, well, this could be bad because now these guys are kind of spotted already. Uh, so there's no secret. You know, they don't, they're not going to get a surprise attack. Um, the enemy knows right where they are. And this leopard is uh, impugned to my range. It's too far out here. So I'm going to call in the SU-22. Takes him a little while to travel, and then he's in mission, and he's on the board here and coming in. In the meantime, a recon helicopter has come up as well, so I'm going to have to shift my AA unit to deal with that. 
Su-22, those massive AT missiles on his wings, he's gonna come in and do a double launch. But the first missile is enough. Of course, Leopard 1's light armor, not much there to deal with. In the meantime, though, I realized my Strela can't see the helicopter because he's down in this pole here. And I'm like, oh, Lord, get moving, sir, get moving. <laughs> because this is a recon helicopter, the VO-105. And so he's able to spot things like my infantry units. And uh, you can tell when a unit's been spotted if it stops blinking. So fortunately, so far, he hasn't seen anything. And that's helpful. But I know it's just a matter of time before he gets close enough to spot some of this stuff. So I'm getting the Strela in range, hopefully. In the meantime, I see, oh, Lord, there's a uh, Fallschirmjäger Milan II unit moving up. And I've got my only T-55 here. So fortunately, uh, the BMP is in position to take advantage. And you see him dropping some rounds on this two-man team. And that's the Strela popping off. And there's one less recon helicopter in the world. Sorry, buddy. In the excitement, though, I've lost track of the Milan team, and that's a problem. So I'm trying to decide what to do about that. And while I'm trying to decide what to do about that, a Leopard 2 has shown up. And the Milan team has shown back up. And down goes my AA. And my Mochutsen are getting shot up. And unfortunately, there's a Lux Recon uh, vehicle there, eight-wheeled armored car, kind of like they had in World War II. Still using them, 20 millimeter cannon. And he's going to push up as well. And you can see I've only got three guys left in the squad. And they're running for their life. Help us. And they're just getting cracked. Two of them, two more go down. Last guy makes it to the house. But um, he gets distracted. Um, just long enough to go down. Thanks, Recon Jeep, for your sacrifice. It's not going to mean much of anything, though. And I call back in my AT. But because the uh, Recon Jeep went down, I lost sight of the enemy Leopard 2. And so he survives. You can see a little bit of stress uh, meter there. And my SU-22 back to base to sort of uh, try and get a handle on things. Meanwhile, another recon helicopter has moved up, trying to spot things. And I don't have an AA unit. I have in the meantime, however, called in a pair of T-72s. I'm hoping that they might be able to slow down the uh, Leopard 2, um, at least until I can get the AT plane back on him. That's really, this can be a sacrifice play a little bit for them. And I'm also going to move up my munitions unit here in the woods. I'm going to get him up to the Samut Schutzen squad and replenish them so it's not just that one lone dude hanging out there. I've got a Strela that's going to come up, AA unit, to deal with this. But until then, I don't like him loitering around. I don't like him hanging there watching my every move. So I have purchased a MiG-23 AA plane. So this guy has air-to-air -air missiles and his guns, and we're going to take a pass at the enemy. Somehow we miss through all of that, and he backs off. He's damaged. A, a tornado comes through, and I decide I don't want to deal with that. You know, trying to get around on him is going to be hard. We're just going to evacuate. So helicopter took some rounds. But he's still in the sky, and I've backed him off for now. Unfortunately, there's now a tornado loitering over, and while he doesn't have great vision, he is there, and that kind of limits my ability to bring in my AT plane for the time being. So we're going to get this Strela up and running. And, of course, points timer has been rolling as well. We're only 10 minutes left in the match. Um, we've got another recon coming up, and I know he's going to be able to spot my Alfclair in advance, and unfortunately he does. So this is the one that took rounds from my Jeep earlier, so he's got a little bit of damage, as you can see, but he's just going to crack on these guys. And I really need him. Fortunately, with them backing up and him coming forward, that exposes him to the T-55 sitting here in the woods. And minus one looks. It was a nice ambush, but now my T-55 is unspotted, as you can see, and that's going to cause problems in a second because the AI is going to know how to get to him. Fortunately, though, I still have control of both these zones, and my Strela is uh, almost set up here at the close. I could stop him here, but again, unless I move him out in the field, he's not going to have a clear shot of the uh, tornado. So I'm just going to move him up here where he's got a little closer, a little more support. He's close to my munitions van, uh, which has just finished resupplying and bringing my moat shoots and back up to a seven-man squad and still has enough supply left to uh, help put some extra missiles back in this guy. You hear the warning sound going off because this 
tornado is still lingering. So, I'm able to get here. I get one shot off. It does damage him, but the Strellas are small missiles. Uh, they're not very big ones. They're very powerful ones. So you can see I dinged him up, but he's going to get out. That's just as well. I have a new threat to deal with. That's an 11-man Jaeger Alf Clara squad right here. And they've set up shop, and they outnumber me severely. I've got two guys in a Jeep on this side. And they could turn the flank, and that could be an issue. Uh, let them get a command unit in here. So I purchased a third plane for your viewing enjoyment, and that is a MiG-21 with rocket pods. So I'm going to use him to drive off these off clear because I can see them with my squad, but I don't want to engage them. And you can see the massive rockets right there. So this is going to be fun. We're actually going to zoom in on these guys. So you can see at ground level the shots they're going to take. And you'd think that would be the end of them, but it's not. <laughs> uh, aircraft are powerful in this game, but not overpowered. Um, I did take out four of the seven guys and stun them and force them off, route them. And that's good. They've run off far enough. I can't see them. So that'll do for now. We'll evacuate the MiG-21 and reload it. Um, it did have a few rockets left. I could have made a second pass if I could still view them. And that probably would have knocked them off. Um, one of the things that happens is you can see down here cohesion on the units. That's sort of their um, ability to stick together and respond to danger, uh, perform effectively in combat. And so um, if you have high cohesion, you take less losses, right? You're more resilient. And so this uh, Falsham Yeager Elf Clare Squad, very you know high cohesion veteran unit, um, they survive most of this. Maybe they hit the deck, whatever else. But with their cohesion down after that rocket strike, if I hit them a second time, they probably lose more than four guys, maybe the rest of the squad. So there is sort of that um, attrition that happens with units. I moved this guy in to help reinforce the Elf Clare Squad, but unfortunately the jig is up and it looks and that Leopard 2 from earlier are back. They've circled the battlefield. The AI has brought them onto the other flank. Now I have an issue. I've called in my SU-22 over here, but I need eyes on them. So I'm hoping this guy can live long enough and I can time this right so that my SU-22 can come in. But it's not going to work. They get off a rocket, but of course that's a light AT and LAW, and that's just not going to do anything. It's not going to cut it in heavy traffic against the MT uh, Leopard 2. It's too heavy of a tank, so it causes a little bit of stress. Of course, you're a tanker and RPGs are coming your way. You're stressed. But because of that, my AT plane breaks off. No target, right? So he's going to loiter there in case I find anything. In the meantime, because the recon helicopter can see my tank and my tank does not have great vision, he's already taken one hit from the Leopard 2A3. He's going to shoot back, but it's not going to do much good. Because again, heavy unit. I'm going to bring him into the woods. I'm going to bring in my AA plane. I'm going to bring in the AT plane, and that's enough. The Leopard 2A3 was side on to me, so he took a heavy AT missile on the side, and that was it. Meanwhile, my BMPs get in on the action with a couple of AT missiles themselves, and the looks has run out of luck. The other Leopard 2A3 has come up, though, and I'm going to pepper him with AT missiles. Unfortunately, again, this is a heavy tank against APCs, and so the BMP reveals itself with that shot and then goes down. But he's walking into a trap. I've got another BMP with another set of uh, ATGMs here. And you can see he takes a hit. He's stunned. He's no damage, but he's stunned. And I'm going to have these two T-72s floating around, taking pot shots at him. And the T-55 hitting him from the side. Again, stress. He wallops this, but he turns his turret, so he takes a side shot from the ATGM. And he pops smoke to get out of there. Or I thought he was. He ends up staying in place. But unfortunately, he takes another hit from the T-72, another hit from the ATGM. He's stunned. And then a final shot from the T-72 is going to bring him down. So as you can see, kind of true to life. You know, you, you need uh, multiple <laughs> multiple tanks and, and uh, things to bring down heavy NATO armor. And uh, these T-72s working in junction with the BMP. Shooting ATGMs can do the trick where you can get a flank shot like I did earlier. This is a recoilless rifle squad. So I'm going to move my motor rifle up to deal with him until I can get some new units on the board. Um, and I'm trying to decide now what to call in with my limited points. Um, again, because I've got it so that there's only so much on the board at one time, and I'm having to kind of play strategically with that, which is a lot of fun for me. I like these kind of small engagements as opposed to a giant 
10 sector map or 10v10, but you can go up to 10v10 in this game. And uh, the other great thing about it is there is campaigns. So if you like playing single player with a narrative storyline um, and keep uh, holding on to units, reinforcing units, um, that has that as well in the Army General campaign, which can also be played co-op. So if you got some buddies, you can play together on the same side through the campaign, which is really exciting. Um, not a lot of RTSs offer that. I got my back against the wall again because I've got another Leopard 2A3 floating around here and the Tornado is back. So, what have I done? Well, I brought in the attack plane, but I'm afraid it's going to miss, right? So I'll pull him back and unfortunately he's going to take a hit from the Tornado and here comes Missile 2 and that's it. But it was a ruse. <laughs> I was using my rocket plane. And because of that, I'm able to bring in my AT plane and goodbye, Mr. Tornado, because he was focused on my rocket plane, which was not as valuable. I was able to distract him and then hit him with my own plane. I've also brought in a recon helicopter to shore up this flank just so I can see what's going on. And now that the uh, tornado is out of the way, my real AT plane can come in, the Su-22, and we'll pop him with a heavy ATGM as he tries to back up. And that's one more down. As you can see, we got a rear shot as he pulled out of there. Now, a player probably wouldn't be smart enough to back him up. The AI, unfortunately, was not. And as the final uh, kind of piece of fun in this match, you can see I'm bringing up some BMPs, but the recoilless rifle can cut through that light armor. So I'm going to have them hold at the crossroads here outside of range. And I'm going to bring in one more treat for you before we finish up the match, and that is an M24, Mi-24 Hind helicopter. Again, gorgeous model, got rockets, got AT missiles, and of course, have a trend turret as well. And we're going to bring him in to uh, clear out the recoilless rifle, because that's not a... Recoilless rifle can't really shoot helicopters. Uh, it doesn't have the elevation, right? So you can see it only hits ground targets there. So with our last two minutes, we're going to have some fun with this. And uh, why not? We'll take it from the point of view of the victim here. So here is the uh, two-man recoilless rifle squad wheeling their recoilless rifle, running for it. There's my hind in the distance. The AI is trying to get them into some cover or something, but that's uh, going to do it. Rocket pods for the win. Now, I've got a, a recon helicopter, so I don't have to worry too much about AA because hopefully I'll spot them first. Not that it matters because there's about 30 seconds until the game is over. And uh, I've had fun with this. So, you know, if the game continued, I need to get some infantry up here to protect the flanks of my T-72s, which are hiding out in the woods ready for an ambush. And um, I need to do something about uh, maybe pushing forward and capturing this other zone. But in this case, that'll do us for the day. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, again, Warno goes on sale tomorrow. Uh, this is not in any way endorsed, endorsed by Eugen. I just like the game and thought you guys might enjoy seeing a little something different today. And if you like World War II action, you've got that uh, in Steel Division II, which is Steel Division's their World War II series. And um, uh, War Game, or uh, Warno, as the newest one is called, uh, is their modern series, and um, it's been fun. Again, I don't think this one's quite as good as Steel Division 2, but um, it is pretty fun. I do enjoy it. I'm happy to see it come up. If you enjoy uh, Cold War-style combat, you enjoy RTS, this one is good. Uh, I've got another one I might show you next week that I think is even better than Warno, as fun as this one is. It's also a little cheaper, too. So if this style of game uh, appear, uh, appeals to you, uh, we'll take a look at another one next week. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I do have another Planes video that will come out at the end of this week. Uh, good replay that I had uh, this past week with some fun action in it that I hope you will enjoy. So uh, until then, uh, good luck to my little guys in the woods. Good luck to your little guys in their planes. Um, good luck and good hunting.